For this lesson, I'm going to be discussing the different types of digital media files. Two of the main types of um, multimedia files that we'll be talking about during the semester is raster versus vector. What is a raster file? A raster file is an image made up of pixels. And a pixel is a single point or the smallest single component in a display device. So um, when you're talking about DPI and PPI, that's what you're talking about. Raster images can be JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, um, TIFFs, PSDs, as well as PDF files. You're going to use raster programs and paint programs like Photoshop and PaintShop. And the purpose of these is to create photographs and images and paintings. What is a vector? A vector image is based on a mathematical calculation instead of a, a pixel. Popular formats that you that include for vector are EPSs, AIs, um, PDF, some PDFs. And you're going to use vectors and and programs like Illustrator, CorelDRAW, and Freehand. Vectors are used to create drawings, illustrations, and cartoons. What are the advantages of using a raster? So using a raster image, you can create continuous tone images such as photographs. You also have millions of colors to choose from, so you're going to get that um, clearer, smooth line between. Disadvantages. The more you enlarge it, the more the image loses its quality and the pixels become more visible. And this is whenever it's called pixelation. The advantages of using vector. So the advantages of using vector is that your images and your files are going to be more scalable. You're not going to have that pixelation effect that you would have using a, a raster. Your file sizes are going to be smaller. And they're resolution independent, which means you can print any image at any size at any resolution. Disadvantages, it's not the best format for things like photographs or photo like elements with blends of color. Files. So the different types of files um, you use in a digital media pro project can include images, text, audio and video. In Photoshop, you're most likely going to be using files like JPEGs, PSDs, PNGs, TIFFs, RAWs, and PDFs. While in Illustrator, you're going to be using more files along the lines of AIs, PDFs, JPEGs, PSDs, Words, TIFFs, PNGs. After Effects is um, MOVs, GIFs, MP4s, AVIs, AI, PDF, PSD, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. You can notice that some of these are going to have some overlap to them. What's really nice about using Adobe programs is they have been created so that you can use other types of Adobe files within those and be able to um, combine programs. Native file formats. So a native file format allows the program to distinguish the type of file and how to display that file when it's open. If a file is unrecognized, it is unable to display the file and not display the pro file property. Every program um, through Adobe has native file formats. Those files are made specifically for that program. So if you use a Photoshop P um, and create a PSD file, which is Photoshop document, the file can only be opened through Photoshop or through another Adobe program. The same goes with um, Illustrator's AI files. All of the programs that you will be working through this class all have a native file format. File conversions. Once you um, once a copy of an image has been saved in its native format, you can change it to another file format. You can convert it so that it can be used um, in different ways. 
Different file formats are appropriate for different situations. It can affect their appearance, it can affect their size, and it can affect its accessibility. For example, if you're working in Photoshop and you're editing a photo in PSD, you cannot take that PSD file to Walgreens and have it printed. It won't be accessible. So you would have to change it to a JPEG or to a TIFF. Um, the size can play, compare, play a role in it because if you have a file that's a JPEG, that's going to be a condensed file. It's much smaller than the PSD. Um, or if you need to create a very large design file, you can use something like a TIFF file, which will allow you to um, save more information into it. OK, so compression is the process of reducing the size of an image. There's a couple different ways of doing it. The first way is lossy compression, and it reduces the size of an image file by removing the information that is not essential. So anything like going from a JPEG uses lossy compression. So if you're working in Photoshop and you change it to a JPEG, it will discard any of the file, any of the layers that you are not using or that you have closed at the time. Lossless compression does not change any pixel data, it just reorders it. So it makes um, it makes the file a little bit smaller, but it's going to keep all the information in it. So when you're talking about files in especially Photoshop, there are three main different types of files that you get, get used a lot. You have the JPEG, which is going to be the compressed file. You have the PSD file, which is the file that you're working with in Photoshop. And if you took the photograph on a camera, you can shoot it in what's called RAW, which is a file that's very large. It has all the information saved into it. So a RAW file is another type of file that you cannot just take it somewhere and have it printed. You're going to have to transfer it into a compressed file and turn it into a JPEG to be able to do that. Resolution. Bitmap images have the visual sizes measured in two ways. So physical size, so you can say that an image is like a four by six inch image or an eight by 10 image. You also have the number of pixels, the DPI or the PPI, which is the um, dots per inch or pixels per inch. Physical sizes are also measured in pixel dimension. If you are looking on Google for an image and you hover over it, it'll give you usually like 960 by 840 or whatever the size is that the um, image is. It'll do it by pixel size. The resolution of an image is measured in pixel density or um, pixels per inch, so the PPI. That is what your resolution will be. The higher that number, the um, more information that has. So let's say that you're working on something that's in a 72 PPI that is going to be made for your computer screens, your phone screens. It's more to be um, web displayed. If you're wanting to print something, you're going to want that resolution to be a lot higher, closer to the 300 range. That way it has a lot more information in the image so that when it prints, it'll give you a smoother color. Resampling. If you enlarge an image, you um, must either make the pixels bigger or add pixels to it. So resampling is adding or deleting image pixels during the process of resizing. Special formulas are used to determine what colors each new pixel should be based on the colors around it. Resizing. Aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height of an image. If you change one number without changing the other, you're going to get a distorted image. When you do this, that's whenever you have an image. If you want to keep the aspect ratio the same and you pull the corners so that everything looks the same, there's no distortion to it. If you don't maintain your aspect ratio, that's when you're going to get like stretching or thickening of an image where things look um, like slightly distorted. Okay, those are our basics of digital media files. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email.